there, chipmunks! Welcome to the AMP Cycling Ride Review Series. I'm your host, Angry Chipmunk, and today we're in Italy riding the Cortina route through the Dolomites. This route is available on Ruby, so let's get right to it. This is a moderate length route at 33.5 kilometers long with a decent amount of climbing at 813 meters. The whole ride averages just 2%, but will peak at a massive 15%. There's only one Strava segment included on this ride, but there are a couple of smaller hills of note in the ride as well. The vast majority of the elevation gain is in the one included segment. The first 20 kilometers of this ride are very mild. There's a mellow uphill followed by a huge flat section and then a downhill. This is a super fun spot to push pretty hard. Just be aware of your energy usage as less than 150 meters of the elevation is before the first hill. The Strava segment included is Fallorina Cortina. It starts at about the 20 km mark, is just under 7 km long, with 520 meters of elevation gain. It averages a pretty steep 7.6% and peaks at 12.5%. Strava lists this one as a Cat 2 climb. This climb can be broken up into a few smaller bits by using the mellower sections to leapfrog along, but it mostly hovers in that 7-10% to range for a lot of the climb. The peak gradient is actually about 1 km before the start of the segment in a few hundred meters pinch. There's a nice downhill section before and after the climb, so if you've saved some energy, you can push at least the start of this one a little bit harder. Otherwise, it's good to just spin up this one at an easy pace as it is well over half the elevation gain and there is another small hill at the end of the ride. The second hill is at about the 31 km mark. It's 1.5 km long with about 100 meters of elevation gain. Some quick gradient math suggests it has an average of 6.6%. Just as the gradient steepens, you'll be seeing 10-13% to pretty quickly before it backs off to 8 to 9 percent. Then the last one kilometer backs off again to about 2 to 4.5 percent. It's not a very difficult climb being so short, and as it is at the end of the ride, there's no real need to pace this one at all. Now for this ride, you'll actually be wanting a pretty good warm-up. The start looks pretty flat, but it's actually mildly uphill for about 4 kilometers. The end is that final small climb, so you'll be wanting a good cool down as well. And as always, I recommend pre-fueling your rides and including plenty of protein. With the hill so late in the ride on this one, you'll need to be fueling again before it anyway. Around 10 to 15 grams as you hit that flatter section before the climb is a good place. It's difficult to fuel on this climb, so be sure to have something before it. And be sure to have your fast-acting carbs on hand for this one, things like gummies, a mini chocolate bar, or a full sugar drink. A post-ride protein of some sort would be beneficial here, as well as a magnesium supplement. It's not the steepest of climbs, but it's still pretty tough. The view here is amazing as always. It's a beautiful summer day in the Dolomites and everything just looks incredible. There's plenty of two-lane roads with massive mountain backdrops plus several small villages to look at. The mountains are so grandiose and they are rising above the clouds here to be almost mythical. There's a bit of roadworks and a lot of spots, but it doesn't really detract from the overall feel of the ride. Now, this ride took me about one and a half hours to complete on 100% difficulty emulation. Depending on how fast you are, look to be budgeting anywhere from one to two and a half hours for this ride. It's not really a good choice for those with time constraints, especially with needing both a good warm up and cool down. Overall, this is a fantastic and beautiful ride that I would definitely recommend. At just over 800 meters of climbing, I would say this is a perfect intermediate climb if you're not ready for 1000 meters plus. It's got a good challenging climb segment and has some easier elements surrounding it, so you're not just doing a super intense pass only ride. I wouldn't say you need to be the keenest climber ever, but it would be helpful to at least like climbing. For this route, I give a 5 out of 5. It's a fantastic mix of easier elements and a good climb. It's not overly intense, and it's perfect for the newer climber. For the climbs, 4 out of 5 and 2 out of 5. The main climb is definitely the most difficult element of the ride, so it could catch you off guard if you're not prepared for it. The view, 5 out of 5. I always love the Dolomites, and the mountains rising above the clouds give a little bit of extra for this one. And overall, 
5 out of 5. It's a beautiful ride with a good amount of climbing, but not too much. Perfect for transitioning to steeper, more difficult climbs. Well, that's it for this review, so thanks for watching Chipmunks. Let me know what you think of the Cortina route through the Dolomites when you've completed it. I'll leave you to finish the rest of the ride, and I'll see you next week for another review. Until then, ride on, chipmunks, ride on.